Marshall Brain. I am the founder of HowStuffWorks.com. Well, right now, How Stuff Works uh, is in the corporate phase. There was the idea phase, and then the business phase, and then the becomes a corporation phase. So, um, it has a human resources department. You see a company that starts to talk about human resources instead of the guys I work with. That that's your key. It's gone to the corporate phase. Gotcha. Yeah. How stuff works probably has fifty or sixty employees. So the main office is in Atlanta. Um, there's actually a corporate body called the Convex Group that's in charge of how stuff works, and um, that whole thing is located down in Atlanta. You know, I do all the media work for the company. So, like when we got the opportunity to be on Oprah, I got to be the person who was on right, Oprah right. and stuff. So um, I still, you know, write articles and I um, do a lot of the stuff I did when it was just me, you know, because I like writing articles right. actually and, um, and interviewing people. And I mean, I started as a hobby because I like doing that. So I'm fortunate that I still get to do that. And then the media stuff is um, kind of icing. Like I've done a lot of work with the company Charles Schwab, and if you look back in the history of Charles Schwab, the company, it was a guy. I mean, there is a real guy named Charles Schwab who I've met and who's a very nice person. And there was a point when Charles Schwab, the guy, was sitting at a desk that was made up of a door sitting on sawhorses. There was a point where he was key. You know, he he started that business, and it would not have started without him. But Charles Schwab, the company now has 20,000 employees and it's, you know, layers and layers of, of people. And, you know, I mean, he will die at some point. He's, right. You know, it's just a fact. In the How Stuff Works sense, I mean, once you become corporate, you have just layers of people and, and any single person is, you know, is important, but certainly not critical. Well, I think any business um, has a culture that's defined, but that can change depending on leadership and you know just who's plugged into that hierarchy. Like, I mean, individual people do flavor the soup, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they cause good and bad things to happen and I mean just to go back to Microsoft as an example um, I mean there are lots and lots of people who made very good decisions both early and midstream yeah. and you know late stream about directions that company would move but there are ten times more products that didn't work right you know and and we could I mean, we could just make this big long list of stuff that didn't work, or it didn't work in version one, or version two, or version three, you know, and, right. and then right. it grew into something that actually did eventually work. If you look back at how stuff works, original business plan, we were going to make money off of advertising and off of e-commerce and off of through affiliate. Yeah, well, no, we actually sales? had a store. I mean, we actually had a warehouse, you know, and products, and we sold. Really? Um, and, you know, the whole model was built off of banner ads that were $20 CPM. So it went from, like, this model around $20 CPM down to where you were getting a dime CPM for banner ads. And that was the post-bubble death zone or right. whatever like if you actually made it through the bubble <laughs> you then had to make it through this death <laughs> zone Google actually changed the entire landscape for web advertising and then the economy got better and banner ads actually started not banner ads per se but sidebar ads and pop-up ads and all right. these other Ad kinds sense. of right and but Google in and of itself redefined the advertising market because sites 
I mean, even little tiny sites can now make money off of their traffic right. through Google without any effort on their part. Advertising worked, and then it didn't work, and then it really, really, really didn't work, and then it changed and it started working. And so that sort of, um, that modify yourself to respond to all those changes of environment is, that's like the defining part of any business is, I mean, stuff changes. So, well, what we talked, like what I talked about today was the creation of cool cities and cool meaning lots and lots of things. So one element of cool is cool architecture and cool restaurants and you know art and things like that but another element of coolness is the way the people in the city interact with each other and the way that creative people come together and spawn new projects and the way people have a sense a collective sense of what they're trying to accomplish mm -hmm. so like in a city no one stands up and says, we are going to make Raleigh a cool city, you know, and, and then everybody gets in line and follows that. That is right. not how it works. But what happens is that somehow a group of people get that feeling or desire going inside themselves and they all happen to get it at the same time and then they all kind of move in this amorphous mass in the same direction and the same result happens, but it happens bottom up rather than top mm -hmm. down so I in in RTP or Raleigh or you know however you want to define this region I don't think we're yet at the point where we have a collective sense of where we want to head I it's not a thing that any one person can do but it's something that I, I mean simply literally by talking to each other and discussing what do we want Raleigh to become, we get that thing in motion. Right now, I don't think we are having that conversation.